Hey everybody, Asic Eric here again. Uh, so, uh, just wrapping up the trunk pan patch here. Uh, I think we pretty well got it at this point. Um, I took the tip from Sean Veldahama on uh, turning up the wire speed where I was getting all those blow throughs, and that actually worked really well. Um, all these tiny little pinholes I had in here, I was able to do those even without the backer on the back. Um, the big blow throughs, I still had to use the backer. Um, but I do believe that helped um, on the. Get this off here. Uh, this is my welder here, uh, the Eastwood 135. Um, this is a pretty low setting for the sheet metal that I'm supposed to be working with, 20 gauge ish, whatever. I think they typically want D4. Um, as the setting. Well, let's check that real quick. Alright, so here's the wire that I'm using, which is 0.6 millimeter. Okay, and I've been trying to stick with that all along, so that hasn't been one variable I've been changing. And actually kind of somewhere in between here, interestingly enough. I haven't looked at this in a while, so uh, we have 0.6 millimeter diameter wire CO2 argon mix is what I'm using. Um, so you can see for 22, 20 gauge, oh, this stuff should theoretically be 20 gauge, I think I measured it at one point, um, is E4 and for 22 gauge would be D3. And you see where I have it, I've got it down on C, um, which is 24 gauge equivalent, um, but the wire speed's all the way up at 5, um, which you shouldn't get into until like 18 gauge. So I'm in some weird hybrid setting here, um, but it worked really well um, for the stuff I've been doing. I'm getting good penetration, really haven't had any problems for this particular metal that I'm working on right now. So, you know, that seemed like that would be too high a wire speed, um, but thanks, Sean, it actually worked worked well. So anyway, that's that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and go over all of this with the DA uh, with some 80 grit uh, to clean up around the weld area and get ready to put some short strand fiberglass on it. All right, we got everything sanded down here. I uh, went over all of this with a 50 grit roll lock. Uh, everything looks pretty good. I found a couple more pinholes along the way. And you know, I was tempted to just let them go. Like, I've got so far, you're almost done. But no, nope, I fixed them, so it's good. I maintained the commitment. All right, so uh, we're ready to put the uh, kitty hair on here. So let me get that mixed up. All right, so this is our tool of choice here. Evercoat, Everglass. Um, I'm not real good at mixing this stuff up yet. I'm still learning. So, cut me some slack. I don't like the way I'm mixing this stuff. So, uh, give it a good stir. I won't make you sit through that. Alright, I think that's pretty good. It's reasonably mixed. I'm going to probably mix not enough of this stuff rather than too much because so I'm not super adept with this stuff yet, um, so I tend to not get the, the hardener right, and uh, it ends up kicking on me too fast, so I'm going to start her with a smaller batch here, and if I need more, I'll make more. Uh, make sure you knead this stuff good. This is the hardener. I won't make you sit through this either. You guys can tell me if this looks like the right amount. Uh, so this is probably a three inch circle if I lay it out in a circle. So I don't think I want to go with a complete line across with this. So I'm going to go less that. Give that a try. Stir it up.
And again, uh, anybody watching this, if you have a better technique for this, I've tried to watch and learn from you guys, but you know, sometimes this stuff doesn't stick. And you think you know what you're doing, and then you get to doing it and you do something completely wrong. But basically, I'm just looking for no more blue in there. there make sure there's no hardener on the spreader. I think that's pretty good. Let me set you up there so you can see the car. this down into the welds as best I can. And for those of you new to welding, the purpose of this is to seal the welds and make them waterproof. So you, and you'll plug up any pin holes and things that are in there as well, but basically you want to seal these welds up good. right there. I'm going to have to leave that on thick. Oh, my hands hurt, man. So much get off of there. So much working on the car yesterday, my hands are just beat. Challenge all in through here too. Do my best. This is probably more cosmetic than anything else right here, but It's getting hard on me. I hope not. I'm going to go blast through all of this stuff real quick. Just in case. I don't want to have this big pile of this stuff go bad on me. stuff off of the edge here. That's going to be a nightmare to sand out later. Okay. We got everything. 
think. Or I'm going to switch over to a little spot right here. I think I was wrong. This stuff doesn't feel like it's hardening. I think it's okay. It's getting scared there, I think. Okay, to the other side. All right. I'll show you the kitty hair here. Uh, I think I got everything covered. I missed a spot right there, but I came back and got it. Um, show the other side. So I did in fact run out of fiberglass about halfway through this side. Uh, it wasn't off by too much. So I actually mixed just the perfect amount because uh, I just had to make another small little batch and then I was good. Um, I did good with the hardener for a change. Um, didn't mess it up. Now, you know, it lasted, I don't know, uh, a little over five minutes probably, seven minutes, something like that, before it started to kick uh, on the first batch and the second batch was pretty similar. So I think I got it right. Um, so I'm going to let this set up a little bit um, and then I'm going to knock it down with uh, some 50 or 80, whatever I have, uh, just to take the high spots off uh, and then uh, I'm going to let it sit overnight and I'll come back and sand it tomorrow. All right, here we go. Um, so as I said, I just tried to knock off the, the really high spots while the, uh, the filler was still soft. Um, Cause this just makes it that much more difficult if you wait until it turns into a rock. So this all looks pretty good here. Show the other side. There we go. Good look up in there. Look, everything's sealed up pretty well. Pretty happy with it. Uh, so, I'm going to have to go back to the paint store tomorrow to get some more epoxy. Because I'm, uh, I'm running low on epoxy and also I've had that epoxy for like two years so I don't really think it's any good anymore. Um, or if it is, it's borderline. Uh, so, the choice I have, so I know a lot of you guys have been using the black epoxy. Obviously I've been using the gray. Um, kind of on the fence about what to do with that. I like the black epoxy you guys have used for the the, the guide code action it gives and stuff like that. I think that's pretty slick. Um, but this car is going to be red, so you know, gray is a good base to go under everything. Because um, I could theoretically use that as a sealer in some places, like for instance, uh, when I get around to doing the firewall, uh, I could use that gray epoxy as a sealer under it. Um, without having to put a proper sealer on it. But, I don't know. Choices, choices. Um, anyway. Probably going to end up going with the gray just because I, I know what it is and I'm familiar with it. But, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, that's going to do it for today. It was just a couple of three hours of work today. I'm glad this thing's wrapped up. Um, like I said, all I got to do now is come in and sand this stuff down, get it smooth, and um, go ahead and shoot the epoxy and then the, the paint over it. Um, I don't know uh, if I'm going to bother filling any pinholes and things that are there. I, I might. We'll see. Um, I haven't been doing that as uh, all the other work I've done, but there really hasn't been a lot of stuff to fill either, so we'll see how it goes. Um, and again, this is inside the trunk, so I may not worry about it. The bottom of the car, I'm certainly not going to worry about it. Uh, let's see. What else? One of the things that's been bugging the crap out of me since I painted the trunk, um, for you guys who came along for that ride, was all of this uh, aluminum oxide that fell in the paint next to the primer. Um, when I was painting the car, it just irritates the hell out of me because I look at the trunk and everything looks so nice and then you just see these big pockets of yuck. Um, this area here was really bad and was covered in it and I had to sand this part off anyway. And so I was just kind of testing here and if I just sand it down, I don't even have to take the epoxy off and all of that stuff comes out pretty much. Um, this is real smooth in here. I mean, it's got a little bit of texture to it but not so much. Um, so I'm debating whether I'm just going to go ahead when I repaint this, just kind of go out a little bit further and fix some of this other stuff that bugs the crap out of me, but I don't know. 
it's a, a lot more painting I have to do if I do that. Um, and I certainly don't want to get into any of this seam sealer and stuff that I did here, but so it's kind of hard to tell, but so this, most of this thing's okay here. It's got some rough patches, but this is okay back in here. Uh, this edge here got it really bad. Um, this flat part over here is pretty ugly. And a little bit up in here, and pretty much the rest of it's okay. There's uh, This up here has got it too. Uh, I'm going to, in all likelihood, have the battery tray right there. So you know, even if this isn't carpeted back here, the battery tray is going to cover that up. So I might not worry about that. But, uh, you know, this is where my perfectionist streak comes out. And it's just one of those things that, you know, somewhere down the road, somebody lifts up the carpet and looks back here and goes, what the hell happened here? Yeah. <laughs> and it's just kind of, it's one of those things that's, bugging the crap out of me because I know it's there. Even if it's covered up, I know it's there. Um, so depends on how ambitious I get here. I might fix that. I might not. Um, I'm, I definitely don't want to take it all the way down to metal and have to re-epoxy it and all of that. But it looks like all I have to do is just sand the sand it down a little bit and then it's going to be good to go. So I might just do that. Um, and as was mentioned in the comments uh, in the last video, uh, this is single stage semi-gloss paint here, so what I'm going to try to do is um, paint the epoxy in this area here. I'll probably have to sand that down to get it smooth because that stuff's really rough. Um, and then run the black out you know, to wherever it is I'm going to go. And then wherever the boundary layer is, I have uh, this color blender here. here stuff um, which is designed to, to blend clear but it's also for single stage um, so like the trunk here for instance I don't really need to do that much so I'll probably kind of go out to, to this edge go around here or something and then I'll just be blending kind of right, right along that edge that might not be too bad um, but I can't buff it or anything since it's semi-gloss so basically I've got to get that finish as close as I can and then just try and blend it um, and, you know, and that's a reason for painting more rather than less here because the seam will be harder to find, especially if I take it out to, to this edge here or even down to this edge here or into this stuff. It's going to be really hard to see where that seam was because you know, I got primer and overspray all over this stuff. I've got to paint this back here anyway. So I may, nah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But uh, it's going to be a lot more painting in the trunk than I wanted. Uh, I really probably should have just left this and not painted it, but you know, hindsight is 2020. What can you do? All right, uh, let's see. Anything else? Um, the other possibility out on this trunk is I might just epoxy this and just leave it for now. Um, knowing that it's pretty jacked up in here and I'm going to have to come back and revisit it down the road anyway. Um, on the thought process, that, thought process that as I'm working on the rest of the car, then I don't have to worry about getting overspray and stuff in here because I'm going to come back and redo it again later anyway. Um, and I might just take some tape and you know, paper and stuff and cover up all these areas up in here that are, that are in good shape and that I don't have to mess with. Um, and then just know that the, the pan itself is going to have to be resprayed someday. Uh, I don't know. See what you guys think about that. Um, because certainly, you know, the sooner you finish something, the more protection you have to add to keep it from getting jacked up. I'm not as worried about the bottom of the car because, you know, there's not going to be as much stuff coming from under the car. Um, and I could just, you know, run paper down to the ground and stuff and cover the bottom, keep the bottom from getting messed up, I hope. But who knows? Um, anyway, that's going to do it. Uh, I'll probably go ahead and post this video today. Because uh, it's kind of lengthy, I think. And uh, then next time you see it, we'll be putting primer and paint on it. Thanks, everybody.